Um, it says, match each situation below with a method that is best suited to estimate distance to the object. Oh, wait, let me go back to my <laughs> original thing. Um, estimate distance to the object. Um, yeah, and I'm sure in the hint, I'll tell you something about, um, I think one thing I remember putting in the hint is how parallax has to do with the distance. Um, like this section summarizes all the methods and um, yeah, and these choices, they do come from the table that's in this section. And I th so let me um, expand on this part, one of the methods described in the chapter. Um, because so this section itself won't be telling you about all the different ways of measuring distances in astronomy. Uh, this is just uh, giving you the third and the last method using the Hertz-Sprung-Lassell diagram. Um, the methods that are in the choices come from this table. And um, to make sense of this table, like what is trigonometry parallax, you do have to uh, remember what's covered in the other sections. Section 19.2. Surveying the stars covers the parallax method as triangulation in space. And it, I think it also should talk about something like measuring. Oh, never mind. I, um, so, so it, it, one thing it should talk about is how this method is limited to measuring nearby stars because. Uh, that the nearest stars, um, wait, and yet me measuring parallax in space. Um, and yeah, the measure distance out to here and uh, somewhere here, it should talk about the difficulty that comes up with the objects that are far away. So, so parallax is a method that can be used to uh, measure objects that are fairly nearby. And it's, uh, oh, oh, and uh, the piece of information that is important to hear is what they tell you. The Hipparchus uh, mission measured the stars out of about 300 light years. So that's a reasonable distance to be measured using parallax. And the method using the variable stars. That's what RR, Lyra, and Cephei, the stars are referring to. That's covered in section 19.3. So this is a kind of a summary question. So um, you need to have looked at these sections and have some sense of these uh, to answer this one question. So um, so something like asteroid, you, can, you should be able to measure it using a trigonometric parallax. Uh, depending on how far away the asteroid is, you might even be able to use the diameter of Earth itself as the baseline, as the section describes someone doing that for the moon. Um, and, uh, okay, um, and star that is not variable, uh, which means you can't use A, but for which you can obtain a clearly defined spectrum. So that would be the HR diagram. Uh, method. So uh, that's, oh, well, yeah, that's B. And the other two here, a tight group of stars in the Milky Way galaxy that includes a significant number of variable stars. So it's those variable stars to which you can measure distance and the other stars that are around it, we, um, you measure their distance by knowing distance to these. So that would be the variable. And depending on what type of variable stars are nearby, it would be one or the other or both. Um, the, the section 19.3 gives you this chart here that, um, that tells you how you can figure out the luminosity based on the period. And these are the two groups. And once you know the luminosity and their brightness, then that's enough information to figure out the distance. Um, Okay, a star astronomers believe to be no more than 50 light years from the sun. So that would be again parallax. And uh, and I guess once they attempt parallax measurement, they will see if this belief is justified or not. And, but at least that's the attempt you to make. Uh, if you can't get parallax effect, then maybe it's farther away than 50 light years. <laughs> 